Okay, hi. <laughs> it's Coffee Pins, I think, number seven. Uh, it's a Friday video periscope where we go and talk to people in coffee. So today we have Ben. Ben Quad. Hello. Hello. Thanks for joining us. If you guys don't know, Ben is representing Canada at the Worlds this yes. year. World Barista Championships. So we're really delighted to have you on Coffee Friends. Thank yeah, you for giving I'm super us excited to your get five minutes. Yeah, absolutely. Well, okay, so um, I guess the first question is, how's it been starting your own shop? And it, how long has it been? Oh, tell us where you are actually, sorry. Oh yeah, Who so right. you? What do you do? Yeah, so uh, my, name's, my name's Ben. I'm, uh, a barista competitor, but I also am one of three partners of Monogram Coffee. Uh, we're a fairly new company in Calgary. We opened a pop-up about a year ago, actually almost exactly a year ago, and then we opened this location that we're sitting in about six months ago. We recently expanded it, um, so we doubled in size. We went from a huge 400 square feet to a massive 800. Um, I actually really like training because what you, so the way we kind of train is we train the whole gamut. So like, I train shops that uh, know almost nothing about coffee and then I train shops that are really trying to, to hone things. And I think that's one of the interesting things um, that this has afforded us to be able to do is, is train that whole different level. Because often, when you train really high level baristas, there's kind of diminishing returns in terms of how much they can really improve. And also they've been, you lose, Everyone in coffee is still passionate, but you know that like first like that uh -huh. twinkle in people's yeah. eyes when like they pour hard or something like that. So it's that yeah, side of training. That side of training is really so. really fun. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe one day I'll experience that aha moment. Yes, it's quite fun. Yes. <laughs> okay. okay, very good. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how you prep for competition and how like you just kind of ah. how much time does it take? as far as like when do you begin and also I think a lot of people out there are wondering about this idea of your sink drink yes. um, and the degassing and all of that concept. Yeah, so like, um, so me prepping for comp, I have this, uh, whenever I go to a competition, I'm always like, afterwards, especially when at nationals when I, when I wasn't winning, I would be like, I never want to compete again. And then the day after I'd start climbing again. So I, th I think for me, a, a big part of competing, I think is um, always kind of being cognizant of the fact that a competition is coming up. Um, and so right now there's a competition coming up. There's a regionals next year that, that you, if you want to compete, you should not be practicing, but you should be thinking about. So I think that's, that's part of it for me is that kind of idea. Is, is always kind of being aware that the competition is coming. And then how did you decide on degassing? Yes, like in, so in I had a... Um, Tell us what the machine is and how, like, because not everybody knows about it. So. Yeah, so what I did at, at Worlds uh, last year and then also this year is I put my coffee in a vacuum sealer. So I had this idea that it would possibly that the carbon, the espresso machine created enough pressure that the carbon dioxide that's inherent in coffee roasting and a byproduct of causing coffee roasting was getting forced into the liquid and creating carbonic acid, which is bitter. And the, the easiest way to kind of taste what carbonic acid does is if you taste flat sparkling water, it tastes way worse than normal flat water, and that's carbonic acid. So I had this idea, and I actually went to this Italian restaurant that I knew had a vacuum sealer. Amazing. And when they, I, I, I took it under the pretense that my wife and I were going on a date to this Italian <laughs> restaurant, which it, which it was, it was a date, but then when they like, came and served us, I'm like, this is gonna sound really dumb and weird, but can I, can I A, use your espresso machine, even though like I'm just a customer, and B, can I use your vacuum sealer? Can and, you just wait here? <laughs> and they let me, and, it, and I was shocked that they did taste very, very different, so um, I know I'm reusing the idea in competition, but it's something where I, I believe in it so much that I wanna use it again. It's the same thing how Matt Perger used an, an EK43 to grind espresso, right. and he continues to use it, and other people continue to use it because they believe in it. So I will continue to use it in competitions because I, I believe in it. Huge trend because I think, you know, like Steve went back to. Yeah, Steve UK, tried it. Like, he's like, oh my gosh, I totally have a vacuum sealer. I can totally do this. It was lying around his roastery the whole <laughs> yeah. time. Matt, Matt used it, and I, I think 
I don't know where they've gone with it, but Saint Ali was using, looking at using it in terms of their roasting QC. Um, so yeah. Very cool. Well, I mean, it just kind of speeds up our degassing of the, you know, like we. Yes. Like we, Gas or coffee, we rest it for a couple of days before we put it on bars, and that kind of cuts out the wait time. It, it could potentially let you jump a step. I, I wonder sometimes if very fresh coffee will still have trouble be, because of how it will extract. Um, but in terms of the, the service of it, I think almost any coffee espresso will taste better if you've thrown it in a vacuum seal. So, what of us do you think we'll see it on bar here? Uh, I so after Worlds, I emailed like the, the company and like, will you like you know send me one? And they did. So I don't know. Our bar is very small, so I don't know if you'll see one for a while. It's something that I would eventually like to do, like have have stuff from competition permeate our our service more. Um, so we'll kind of see. The idea I did at Nationals this year, I'm interested in doing um, potentially on bar. Right, so if anybody can get their hands on the footage, you can maybe see that presentation that Ben did at uh, Nationals. So basically I took um, a whipped cream siphon and uh, sifted the grounds, threw them in, used uh, kind of uh, water that I thought worked better with the coffee, so I, I remineralized uh, reverse osmosis water and then pressurized it. And basically what you can do, because it's a, a full immersion method, <laughs> is you get a very even espresso extraction. So, uh, and the other thing is you can brew like six espressos at a time if you want. So, um, it's a, it's, I'm, I'm still playing with it, so I want to make it taste a little bit better, but I think it'd be interesting to have it on, on the menu. You might not serve very many, uh, but I think it'd be cool if someone, like if a group of people came in and they're like, we want four espressos, and you just bust out one brewing vessel and you can make four espressos that are all identical. It's like opening a bottle of wine for someone rather than like, I don't know, giving them one off the board. It's very good, because consistency is important. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, and it, it does taste slightly different, but it's pretty close to espresso. Amazing. How do you, like that sounds all very technical. How do we uh, bring the customer, like the community into this? Okay. Uh, yeah, no, I actually think the interesting thing behind it is I was able to make espresso with a setup that would cost you, I don't know, $65. Um, like if you if you wow. pared it down to its bare bones, like if you have a coffee grinder and a whipped cream siphon and a, and a metal filter, you can make espresso. Um, and very evenly extracted espresso. Because I think often at home people struggle with evenness because their grinder and their machine isn't often giving them very even extractions. Um, or they, it's hard to control brew ratios. So basically I was able to make espresso without an espresso machine. So I actually think there is potentially a, a home and application. And more technicalities from you after this. But um, so today the big news is that Intelli Intelligentsia mm -hmm. got uh, sold as some got sold to Pete's Coffee. Yes. What are your thoughts? I think, uh, I think stuff like that's really, really interesting in that um, I don't think there's anything bad with it. They still have the, the, they still have a lot of the brains of Intelligentsia in the company, so I, I don't think it's like the end of Intelligentsia, but I think it's interesting. To me, the more attention specialty coffee can get, in some ways, the better. I think, um, maybe this will open up funding for other cafes and, and stuff like that. Um, I don't know if you will really feel much impact here in Canada. And I think something interesting in Canada is as our dollar gets weaker and weaker, uh, there are fewer American roasters just because it's, it's hard to buy it as a, a Canadian cafe. So I don't know how much impact we'll experience in Canada, but I, I do think it's really interesting. So if Second Cup came and said, hey Ben, hey I Ben. I started at Second Cup. Uh, we'd like to buy you out. When yeah, we'll bring. Uh, if they're like, hey, we want to buy you out. I think, um, would I do it? Is that yeah. the question? I think, um, yeah. to me, I know many, many people in coffee where the limiting factor behind their development and growth and improvement of their product is money. It's not, it's not like lack of talent or lack of ambition. It's simply money. And I think there's right. many baristas that could have cafes and the thing that's limiting them is simply money. So I think that if you sold, but you sold with the intention that I'm going to do something better with Puffy with this new found money, I think that's not a, a bad thing at all. And if we have all the money in the world and we want to throw it at Puffy community and building community, how would we do that? Oh, I, I have like, 
I dream of finding ways to make baristas uh, give baristas careers. I think that's something that like I don't have answers actually. Like we have ideas, but no answers. And I I think that I'm I think that's a big question for specialty coffee is like how do you keep baristas as in coffee without them having to go and start their own cafes. So I'd start some sort of weird research company that would like do surveys and never have an answer. For that okay. <laughs> research and yeah. uh, focus groups. Okay, focus groups, working into working groups, and then yes. building, building a, I don't know. And then board. annual reports, yes, uh, annual. biannual reports. You know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Who's your nomination for the next? Yes. Topic? So I've I've been watching them, and there's there's lots of baristas. There's been a roaster. I would actually like to nominate maybe maybe two people. I'm happy to do customers as well. Like um, I think customers are. Oh yeah, yeah. I would like to nominate actually Wes and Jen Farnell. They uh, own uh, eight ounce coffee, so they are um, like equipment people, and I think they have a very interesting take on things and view of, of coffee because they're viewing it from a very different angle than I. Am. Exciting. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks so much. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Lots of hearts. Thanks for. Okay. <laughs> See you guys. <laughs>